If you look at the family tree of cephalopods, cuttlefish, squids, and octopi, you'll see a class of flashy, nimble, and clever creatures. Soft-bodied, but big-brained. And then there's the Nautilus. With no camouflage, no ink, and relatively poor vision, the Nautilus is a bit of an oddball in a family of eccentrics. I would describe their lifestyle as kind of laid back. They're the only externally shelled cephalopod. This is how they protect themselves, and it makes you slow. Dr. Jennifer Basil is an evolutionary biologist who studies the chambered Nautilus, particularly its brain. These animals live in the deep sea. There's not a lot of light. They use smell to get around. They use it to find each other. They use it to find food, like carcasses. So they have a greatly expanded olfactory lobe, and there's a lot of organization in that lobe. There's, there's layers like you see in an octopus brain. Which is considered to be the most complex of all invertebrates. They have up to 40 dedicated, obvious lobes in their brain, and some of those are dedicated to learning and memory. And it is believed that these evolved in order to compete with the highly visual, fast-paced lifestyle of bony fishes. Nautiluses, on the other hand, are, are not so visual. And their brains reflect this. The notion was their brains are small, they're dumb. It probably doesn't help that they spend most of their lives feeling and sniffing around in the dark and I've always been a sucker for the underdog. So I thought their complex behaviors are completely alien to us and we might not recognize them just by watching them. These guys are probably really good at remembering smells. So Dr. Basil and Dr. Robin Crook created a series of experiments to test the Nautilus's memory. Often in the deep sea, the wavelengths of light that make it that far are blue. And there are also bioluminescent bacteria that are blue that are often found on decaying food items or food items for a Nautilus. So we thought, okay, why don't we see if they can associate a blue light with the smell of food? And so what we did was we put them into a little Nautilus car seat. We flashed a light, and then just a second later, we released some odor. And then we wanted to see, did they learn that blue light means food is coming? similar study may ring a bell. So this conditioning experiment is very much like what they did with Pavlov's dog, where you ring a bell and that meant food is coming, the dog salivates, and then after a while, all you have to do is ring the bell and the dog salivates. In the case of the Nautilus. Tentacles would come out like this. Um, they'd say, oh, there's food around somewhere, food around somewhere, and we always fed them after the experiment, so they got their food. But we tested it from a half an hour up to 24 hours later. And so what we found was that up to about an hour, if you flash a light at them, their tentacles come out like, where's, he, where's my food reward? And then there's a period of time where they don't react at all after an hour. Called memory consolidation, where the Nautilus is filing the memory away for long-term use. And then finally, um, after, after about six hours or so, and the animals started responding again. It's the expression of long-term memory. So they have short-term memory and long-term memory. They then tested to see if this demonstration of learning also applied to spatial awareness. The goal was for them to find a hole that led to deeper waters. We trained them to find it, put them into the maze when they hadn't been in the maze in weeks, and they would swim straight for the, the hole. These results rivaled similar tests with octopus, which is impressive given that this species is considered a living fossil. The nautilid line is hundreds of millions of years old. It you know, emerged not too long after mollusks did, and a number of us have the idea that by comparing them to the octopuses and squids, we can kind of learn where big brains come from. And if the Nautilus is capable of learning, then maybe it wasn't just competition with bony fishes that drove cephalopods to have complex brains. Maybe the ancient Nautilus already had a big brain just from coping with other cephalopods. Either way, this brain predates anything that you see in the vertebrate lineage. I think just in terms of thinking of ourselves on the planet with other organisms, it's, it's a little bit humbling. Um, to think this brain's really old and these animals are still here. And hopefully we'll be around well into the future. Who knows what else they'll learn between now and then. If you like squids and octopus, check out these other videos in our Science Friday cephalopod series. For our tentacled overlords, I mean Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.